Hello everyone, my name is Adam Reba Fox. Welcome back to another Tech Tuesday. This one being hopefully a quicker one as allergies are kicking my ass at the moment. And I probably sound a little funny as I have in videos for like the past couple months now. And I look like crap. So, happy Tuesday. <laughs> this week we've got some interesting news. I'm just going to jump right into it here. Uh, we've got some leaked images and some related things of the PlayStation 4 Slim. This is the upcoming PlayStation 4, and Eurogamer has confirmed that it's real. Their digital foundry dude, Richard Ledbetter, actually went and met the person who got it early and took photos of it and compared it to the original, and he even had a video of it booting up, but then they took some legal advice and decided to take it down so that they didn't get into a lot of trouble. But it's real, it's PS4 Slim, it's aiming to potentially, or it looks like it's going to aim to be cheaper than the original PS4. And they're supposed to be announcing it with the PlayStation 4 Neo on September 7th in an event in New York. And then theoretically released shortly after the event in September. But we will see. We haven't got anything official yet because it's not supposed to be announced yet. Uh, in other news, Nick from actual Tetra Ninja... He uploaded a video talking about it with the images and it got striked down by Sony, which is absolutely bullshit. And as he said, it's bullshit. Nothing wrong with the video, but only images. Uh, he can still fight it theoretically and I'm going to make sure I suggest that to him. But gotta love censorship via copyright strikes. Uh, he said his angry rant video coming later today. I'm interested in seeing that. Twitter has finally updated to help fight abuse and extremism on their platform. Now, you have a quality filter by, in which you can limit notifications based on accounts that are basically, you can filter out accounts that are flagged as being low quality based on when, the, when and how the account was created and their history of tweets. They have a bunch of behind the scenes quality indicators that they're going to base it off of. They're not exactly sharing what all they are, but they're allowing this and then allowing users to only get notifications from people that they follow. Now that option has always been there, but the quality filter has not. It's only been there for super high profile, basically celebrities and verified users. They've also banned now a total of 360,000 accounts, or suspended them rather, and 235,000 of that was suspended in the past six months related to accounts that promote terrorism or extremism. Again, they're just, they're trying to fight back. They're trying to boost their PR and morale in both the harassment and extremism levels. They still have some catching up to do, but they're making progress and that is what we want to see. We want to see more tools and capabilities available because so much happens on Twitter that is not okay. And Twitter's finally starting to catch up. The big news story, at least in my opinion, of this week, and I even featured on the article a comment that I got on one of my videos, that the Windows 10 anniversary update has been breaking third-party webcams, including Logitech C920 and C615. Basically, for whatever reason, well, essentially I have the reason here, but according to The Verge, who uh, found a Microsoft-affiliated, essentially, blog, I forgot what it was called, like, The Rot or something, Basically, uh, the Microsoft devs decided to restrict uh, or drop support for the H.264 and the MJPEG codecs from webcams in order to prevent performance issues. Because after the Windows 10 anniversary update, Windows native apps have a lot more access and control to your webcam. And apparently they decided that those two codecs would cause performance issues with that. The problem being... Those are the two main codecs that third-party third webcams use to communicate and transmit their compressed data. So lots of people are having issues where their, C their Logitech webcam software will literally freeze upon trying to open the, we uh, the webcam. And the same thing with Skype, which is hilarious. Microsoft's like, we got a new Skype, but it, we, we broke it ourselves by screwing up this webcam thing. Now, there is a fix or a potential fix, depending, uh, you know, it's always a pure user thing, but this... User has shared a registry entry that you can change. You add D word, enable frame server mode, and set the value to zero of this registry entry. And even my own commenters, I talked to both Ghost Gurio here and someone else who had commented on my videos about that program, and they have both confirmed that the registry entry did work for them to re enable their webcams from to work. 
Some users are reporting an issue where the, the software no longer freezes, but it only shows a black screen. However, for the most part, it would appear that uh, the, the, the software no longer crashes and it will start working if you do this. But it's pretty freaking ridiculous that this is what happened. I I don't know. It, 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 it really bothers me. But supposedly a fix, I, I don't know what the fix will be. But supposedly a fix is coming, but not till like mid-September. So, dear lord. <sighs> it's one of those things where people report like, after a certain Windows update, this, that, and the other breaks, and then it works fine for me, and I'm like, it's probably just a per user basis. But no, it's it, it, it's affected like hundreds of thousands of people. And yet when Microsoft is like, a well, Windows 10 has the highest customer satisfaction rating of all Windows, I somehow doubt that. Intel and Cisco are changing their strategies a little bit. Uh, both moving into software and alternative platforms. Intel is looking to reduce their its dependency on actual processor chips, and Cisco is looking to reduce its dependency on switches and hardware, and they're breaking into software. Intel has already announced their own virtual reality platform called Alloy. They even have a headset for it going and everything using Intel RealSense technology. They've kind of been building up to this for a while, and Cisco has, a, has cut 7% of his workforce in layoffs, about 5,000 or so jobs, in which... Really, really sucks in the short run, but means that they're making investments to branch out a little bit in the long run. And that seems kind of like weird, but it's always good, like, I guess not always, but it, it's generally a good thing for major companies which have the funding, the research, the skilled people to back them to branch into other areas because they could come up with some more innovative stuff or improve or on what exists or post competition to other companies that are kind of dominating the field at the moment. At long, long last, you can unlock your Chromebook with a pin. I use my Chromebook all throughout college, and I've always wanted to be able to have a pin unlock for my Chromebook instead of my giant Google password. Finally, you can with a latest, with a recent update. You go to Chrome Flags and quick unlock pin, restart it, and you get to set a pin. Now I just need Ubuntu to do that because I'm not using my Chromebook anymore because it's old and slow. And now I'm using my System76 Ubuntu laptop, and Ubuntu also doesn't have a pin login, so I would like to set that up as well. Lastly, we have more leaked images, this time of the GoPro Hero 5. Uh, up on Reddit, someone posted the uh, or parts of the camera manual, but then up on mirrorless rumors, we actually have leaked images of the specs, the measurements, just the general input and output. Of course, it for the most part looks like every other GoPro, the one thing that stood out to me as actually being different was the USB Type-C connection in the specs. Instead of the mini USB that GoPros have used for a long time, it looks like they're finally upgrading the USB Type-C, although I have not seen any specific information as to whether or not that enables charging, which USB 3 spec that is, and so on. But ideally it's 3.1, it'll have charging capability and faster data transfer since it will be able to record you know, high-end 4K footage, which will take up a lot of space. So, pretty cool. Decent amount of news roundup here today. The big thing being Windows 10 breaking webcams. What the hell? And a PS4 Slim coming out, which looks pretty slick. I, uh, I'm sticking to mine, but it it's definitely going to be a good option if you pick it up. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Tech News. Trying to think of anything from me that you're missing. There is a couple things that I wanted to point out and I don't have prepared here. I We may have gotten a new patron since last week. I'm always bad about that. No, I think I actually acknowledged them in last Tech Tuesday, but I'm going to say thank you anyway because our Patreon supporters is how I get to keep doing this free content. We are now up to four new ones since the revamp. We've got MC Wolfman. He is the new one. Thank you so much, MC Wolfman, for hanging out. I've posted a lot of videos. I posted like a full seven day week, which is something I addressed in an unlisted what the fact video coming very soon about specifically how my Patreon system works. But because one of my long term Patreon goals, goals is that I want to be able to post seven days a week and I set that as a Patreon goal. But then someone asked, okay, how do we actually reach that point? And so I explained that there will like, and especially as more Patreon support comes in, there will be weeks where I do post seven days a week because I simply record so much content, and if stuff gets in the backlog too long, it no longer becomes relevant. For example, 
I posted a haul video on this channel, which I don't think I've ever actually done. I've posted on my gaming channel and the vlog channel, but I wanted to experiment with it on here. It didn't do so hot in terms of views, but it did get a good response in terms of likes and comments. So it's something I may return to if I have a haul or recent pickups video worth making in the future. But that went up on a Saturday, and then this video making fun of a review request email that I received went up on Sunday. And then yesterday, we had editing tip number one, and it's inspired a whole series that I have planned, but it was actually a sponsored video sponsored by Graphic Stock. And they reached out and sponsored a nice video and gave me access to their stock photo service, which I've used even in thumbnails on the channel already, such as here, that security little thing came from a stock photo. And so did that download icon. And so did that image right there. And so that went live. I would really appreciate it if you watched that, especially if you create other content. Then we have the usual lineup of Ubuntu tutorial on a Friday, review on a Wednesday, and tutorial or guide on a Monday, just like we're going to have this week. Uh, tomorrow's review will most likely be... Did I schedule that up yet? Ha! Ah, I did not. I had this whole plan to do things early and I never got to it. Okay. That's... Okay. I'll get there though. I'll get it done today. Today's or this week's review tomorrow is going to be the top... Th or, well, not top three, but three lenses you can get for your camera, for your DSLR, under $50. And it's a cool outdoorsy video I made. However, the issue is the audio is absolute shit. So apologies, but it I can't recreate the video. So I added some in-studio voiceover and tried to make it work. So hopefully that gets a decent response. And then I have a couple more outdoor videos planned, but I totally rehauled my uh, uh, outdoor audio gear. So that way that doesn't happen again. All right. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Oh, also. I do have a new webcam I'm reviewing that has manual focus. It doesn't have autofocus. You have to manually set the focus by twisting the lens and then it has LED lights. It's the most ridiculous, stupid concept in the world and it's going to be a very fun and hilarious review. Smash the like button if you enjoyed, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos, and comment down below if you have anything to say about this week's news, and I'll catch you in the next one.